Good morning. Today I'll explain the experiment on springs. In this, we are going to find out the spring constants. Two springs are given. So, spring constants for these two springs. And also, we will verify the law of springs. Law of spring means when two springs are connected in series, there will be an effective spring constant. So, we know a reciprocal of the effective spring constant. If I take that as k, 1 by k is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the two individual springs. This is the law of series combination of springs. When it is connected in parallel, then the effective spring constant you can write as sum of the individual spring constants. So, this law we will have to verify. So, we will be finding out the spring constants of two springs individually and also we will uh, put that in series, find out the spring constant, connect that in parallel, again we will find out the spring constant and using these equations we will verify the loss of springs. So, as you know the spring constant is the force required to produce unit extension. So, if F is the force applied and with that force if x is the elongation in the spring then spring constant is expressed as f by x. So, the unit you can write as force by distance. So, it is Newton per meter. So, in our experiment you are given with two springs. So, we can conduct the experiment in two ways. One is called as static method. In static method what you do is see so you connect the spring suspend it from a fixed support. Here we will fix a meter scale, a scale and at the end of the spring a reference point will be fixed. So, something like this, a reference point will be fixed. On this scale, whatever reading it shows will take us the reading corresponding to the spring when it is not extended. Even with a dead load, we can take this reading. After this, we will suspend a definite load from the spring. So, when you are putting a definite load, so the spring will elongate. So, it will be coming to some new position. So, the pointer will now show you another reading. So, this difference in these two readings will give you what is called as the extension. And here, whatever mass you are adding, so, depending on that force will be m into g. So, this way f you are applying and x you can measure. Using this, we can find out what is the spring constant. That is called as static method. But in dynamic method, what you have here is, so you make the spring oscillate. So when the spring is oscillated, so, if I suspend a spring and with a definite load, then if I pull this mass little bit down and leave it, the spring will execute oscillations. Like this, here if I little bit pull it and leave it, I will get the spring oscillating. When it is oscillating, I have to find out what is the period. Period means time taken for one complete oscillation. So, if I take the reference of this mass from the bottom when it goes up and come back to the same point, it is one oscillation. This way, I have to take the time for a definite number of oscillations. So, we will go for 10 or 20 oscillations. So, we will go for 20 oscillations. So, we will take the total time for 20 oscillations. So, this by uh, that time by 20 will give me the period. So, we will measure the period of oscillation while the uh, pendulum is oscillating. So, that is why it is called as dynamic method. So, in dynamic method, you have the expression omega when you have the spring oscillating in, in simple harmonic motion, you know the acceleration, acceleration is equal to minus omega squared into x. 
so this is the equation for the simple pendulum also so where you have the acceleration proportional to the displacement so this is an equation for the simple harmonic motion so in this particular case spring we will be getting the acceleration as equal to minus k by m into x in the place of omega squared we will be getting k by m so omega angular frequency i can write as root of k by m omega is the angular frequency k is the spring constant m is the mass you are suspending at the end of this spring so if i am putting m force will be mg so that mass so using this you know t period you can write you know omega is 2 pi into f f is reciprocal of period so period i can write as 2 pi by omega so in this case we have omega root of k by m so in the place of omega if i put root of it's in the denominator k by m this m i can take to the numerator so 2 pi root of m by k using this equation we can find out what is the spring constant see k i can write as if i square this t squared is 4 pi squared m by k so period square is 4 pi squared into mass you are suspending divided by the spring constant so spring constant from this i can evaluate as 4 pi squared m by t squared so in this case what you have to do is you suspend a specific mass at the end of the spring make the oscillations and count what is the period that's the experiment so intuitively for suspending the first spring we have to find out this value so k1 you will be getting do it with the second spring k2 you will be getting and connect the two springs in series series will be like this first spring attached or connected the second spring at the end you are loading this this is called a series combination so in this also we will be noting what is the period then in parallel combination both the springs will be connecting like this parallel one frame is there at the end of the frame we will be adding the mass so this is called as parallel combination so intuitively for two springs we will find out k1 k2 effectively when it is connected in series you will find out what is kgs effective spring constant when in series then this we will note as kp you know, effective spring constant when it is connected in parallel so this way using this equation we can find out this will be in series this will be parallel we can find out what is the spring constants of the individual springs also using this experimentally you can find out what is the spring constant using this equation and theoretically using these two equations we can verify that is our experiment so to do the experiment what all things we need is we want two springs slotted weight fixed support and a stop clock these are the things we require for the experiment in stop clock this is start then stop reset so i am resetting the stop clock to zero now in this we will be adding a specific load so i'll suspend say mass m1 so whatever mass i suspend i can use it and different trials this is trial number one so in this trial number we will find out what is the time taken for 20 oscillations so time for 20 oscillations i can make different trials in this two trials if i make so mean 
time I can find out. This mean time by 20 will give me the period. Then I can calculate period square. Then finally I can substitute the equation. So in this, suppose if I, so this is the spring, spring is suspended at that support and I am adding a specific load. Suppose if I put a small weight like this, if I pull it down and leave, oscillation is not clear, that means mass is not sufficient. So you have to add some more weight until the oscillations are very clear. See now I added 150 grams, so I will check whether the oscillations are proper. Now it is oscillating properly, so I will use this mass 150 grams. Now in this case, let the body oscillate like this. So when it comes to one point, so I am referring the bottom point of this mass, when it comes down, I start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I am getting 10.84, that is 10 second and 0.84. So I will write it as 11 seconds. I am getting it as 11 seconds. So same execution I can uh, one second or repeat, second try. So again when it comes down, I start 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 19, 18, 19, 20. So I am getting 10 point, so it is nearly 10. So mean I take it is 11, 10.5 second. So this by 20 I can find out as the period. Then I will go for the period squared. Then I will use in this equation k spring constant is equal to in this case it is for the first spring k1 4 pi squared m mass I used is m1 150 grams t I am getting I note this as t1 so t1 squared. So I can find out what is the spring constant of the first one. Same way I will do it for the second spring also. So for the second spring also I will do the same similar capital column or if I use it like this, this is for the spring 1, this is spring 2 if I take, second spring also I can do in the same manner, find out what is T2. Now what I do is, I will connect this in series, I will take two springs. connected in series. I will put almost the same load may be sufficient when you are connecting it in series. So again I am putting 150 mass so better I will take the mass here. So 150 grams. So second trial also I am doing with 150. Now I am connecting this to with parallel. I mean series. Series. So K yes. So here also I am putting 150 grams. So let me try the oscillation. Oscillations are clear. Again I will uh, reset the stop row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it has taken some more time. So nearly 14. So, 14 seconds it is taking. One more trial I can make. So, here it is 14.56. I will take it as 15. So, I am getting 14.5 seconds. So, I will be getting what is T3. So, T3 square I can find out. Then, using T2, I will be calculating what is K2. So, it will be 4 pi squared M2 also is equal to 150. So, same mass I am using T2 square. When they are connected in series, I will note it as KS. Now, I am getting it as 
4 pi square mass is same t3 squared when they are connected in parallel we will see for connecting this in parallel you can suspend the springs like this make use of a common loading frame this we can use this way you can so you are getting a horizontal plane here and in this horizontal plane you put the load so the both the strings will be elongating to the same extent so in this you can see this mass is not sufficient it is not properly oscillating so some more when it is connected in parallel you have to put a slightly larger load so now i have put 100 250 grams i have put so oscillations are okay so if you want you can put some more load so i'm trying it see now it is 300 grams so with 300 grams very clearly it is oscillating so i'm using 300 grams here this is parallel so you will see what is the time for this reset two three four I am getting 11.07 so 11 seconds so this way I can repeat the experiment one more try find out what is T4 I will find out what is K spring constant the parallel combination using this equation so mass I use some other way. so M2 I am using so T4 rise to so this way individual spring constants you are finding out experimentally when the springs are connected in series are uh, finding out the experimental value and also when it is connected in parallel you are getting the spring constant. Now after taking this you use this relation when they are in series you know effective spring constant you can write as 1 by k1 plus 1 by k2 so this will be k1 k2 by k1 plus k2 that is 1 by ks so effective spring constant ks is equal to k1 k2 by k1 plus k2 so you can calculate individual values of k1 and k2 you can substitute find out what is the value so this value we can compare with the value we obtained by the experiment so this will give you the experimental value of a spring constant when they are connected in series this will give you a theoretical value using the equation when it is connected in parallel we know kp is equal to k1 plus k2 this also you can compare with the value you obtained from the experiment with the springs parallel so this way if these two so in the result you can write theoretical value as well as the experimental value so when they are in series you will be getting values these two values should be near when they are parallel again you are getting two values these values should be near if they are near you can say springs law law of spring is verified that is our experiment so you are finding out individual spring constants as well as you are verifying the law of springs that is experiment thank you